Oh, it's time for the new Adam Does Movies video. I better put my mask on. With Halloween ends in theaters and on Peacock, that's right, you can check this thing out in the cock day one, <laughs> there's been a lot of fan appreciation, a lot of nostalgia rearing its ugly head over an old classic. And of course I'm referring to Halloween 3, The Season of the Witch. Candy corn on the table, I've never even watched this film before, I had no idea what to expect. But self-identified star Tony from Hack the Movie said, Adam, Booby, you have to watch and review this film. I'm, I'm, I'm eager to know your thoughts. That's right, Adam. Terrific. Let's talk Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I had no idea what to expect when I fired up this film outside of it's gonna take place on Halloween, obviously. Laurie Strode may or may not be in it. And of course, we're gonna get a lot of Michael Myers going around killing people. Gotta have me some Michael Myers killing people. The classic, iconic character back again for a third. He's not in it. He's not even in the movie. Great observation. What the hell did I just watch? Is what I uttered afterwards and several times during the film. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, has no Michael Myers. It's set in a different universe altogether from Michael Myers, where in fact, Halloween 1 is a movie inside of this movie. Isn't that something? What in the hell were they thinking? Well, I'll tell you what they were thinking. They wanted to make this its own anthology. They wanted Halloween to be the catalyst and everything around it could be different. It could be changed. Maybe it's Myers, maybe it's a witch that's never really in the film. Maybe it's something completely different. Before I really go to town on this movie, raw dog it into oblivion, I do want to say one thing. It's different. They didn't just go for your stock sequel and I appreciate that. I respect that it tried to tell its own unique tale. That it uh, took some chances and none of them paid off and that it is at least entertaining. Oh, in case it wasn't very clear, this is a spoiler video. The movie's been out for like 30 years. Okay, don't, don't, don't get mad at me if I ruin something about Season of the Witch. Uh, spoiler, there's no witch, okay? You can get that out of the way right out of the gates. That's a good point. I should first address the Timothy Oliphant in the room, and that's that John Carpenter did not return for the third outing. He, he's had enough, I guess. He is still scoring the music, just not the one you expect. That iconic Halloween theme is gone, replaced with some equally cool synth, some equally cool synthwave music. It's a little stronger though, it's a little, uh, a little aggressive, especially in the opening scene, uh, where it's hard to even focus because you have this like, and that goes on for like eight minutes. Tommy Lee Wallace directs this one. He also did, I believe, the It two-part TV series. That's kind of his, uh, uh, claim to fame. He's doing a decent job here though. When the movie is Halloween, it looks Halloween. When the movie's not Halloween, it looks like a soap opera. It, it kind of looks cheesy. If you say so, Adam. So because I suffered from a minor concussion after watching this, I'm gonna give you a plot synopsis so completely out of this world, you won't believe what I'm saying is actually reality, but it is. The film starts with an Agent Smith knockoff. I mean, I guess it was prior to the Matrix, but we're gonna say a knockoff anyways who's chasing a man. Uh, the man is hysterical. He, he says that people are after him, we're gonna die, whatnot. And accompanying him on his run is a different Halloween font and color. We have it in baby blue. Uh, telling the audiences, this is not the Halloween you're used to. This isn't a good Halloween movie that you're used to. This is something different. We then jump to one of the catchiest songs in film history, and that's all thanks to the Silver Shamrock. Eight more days till Halloween, Silver Shamrock. And this song will be repeated at nauseum throughout the entire course of the film. And I love it every time. I've been walking around the house singing it. Eight more days till Halloween, Silver Shamrock. What is Silver Shamrock? Oh, we'll get to that. You better believe we'll get to that, baby. The mystery man survives, but barely. He's hanging by a thread. He ends up in the hospital where lights are gonna be out very shortly as one of these agents infiltrates the wing and digs his thumb into the guy like the mountain on Game of Thrones season something. And those eyes are gone. The dude's dead and everything else is history. At least for a couple days until his daughter comes around, starts sniffing, getting suspicious of the death of her father. This young woman is Ellie Grimbridge. And I have to point out, she's a lovely actress and she is thirstier than the Strode girls in Halloween Ends. This woman is ready to go. 
And I have to say, Halloween 3 subverts expectations in more ways than fun. Because I was expecting Ellie to get topless at some point, and they pulled the curtain out from under me so many times I lost count. How do you dangle this sweet carrot in front of me and not let the rabbit take a bite? That's what she said. And no, I'm not being perverted. The movie goes out of its way to taunt, to tease. There's a scene where she takes a shower. The camera does a tasteful zoom in close. She opens the door, the steam comes up, steam's coming out of my pants and I'm all in. But then out of nowhere, a towel covers her up. She drops the towel, simultaneously grabbing the comforter from a hotel room and wraps herself in it like a burrito. First off, gross, you just got clean and now you're gonna put the most disgusting thing known to man on your body? That thing's got more STDs than Charlie Sheen probably does. Remember, remember Charlie Sheen? <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, and possibly more impressive and at the same time frustrating, there's a scene where she's making out, about to make love to the main protagonist in the film, we'll get to him in a second, and she starts to drop the top. But before we can see the goods, he strategically places his head right in front of her nipple where he suckles for a few seconds before the camera turns away. Now, I found that quite salacious, but I also find it in poor taste that we didn't even get a peek. I agree. Not even a nip slip. I sure hope my grandma's watching this review. Hi, grandma. I'm an adult. And who's that strapping hunk of a man she's with? Well, it's none other than Tom Atkins as Daniel Chalice. He's a doctor. He's the one that operated on her father. Well, I guess just looked after him. He didn't get very far because uh, the guy was operated on by the agent, uh, specifically in the eyeball region. The doctor thought things were very sus as well. So he and her go on a road trip and one of their findings leads them to Silver Shamrock, one of the largest conglomerates this side of the Dixie line. I don't know if that's an expression. I made it one. He's also divorced. I should point this out because it is important. His ex-wife, an actress from Halloween 1, playing a different character. What are, we, what are we doing here? So they're on a road trip. They make it to this small town where the Silver Shamrock company exists, where they take residence, and they start to do some checking around. They do some snooping. Here's where we get to the real meat of what's happening, and I need you to bear the fuck with me. I need you to bunker down and hang on tight. It turns out the Silver Shamrock Company, I don't know if that name means anything outside of this film, if there's like a double meaning, I'm too dumb to understand that. It turns out they are producing Halloween masks, a pumpkin, a witch, a skull, that children are putting on because of that catchy song they heard on TV. Eight more days till Halloween, Silver Shamrock. What they're being requested to do is purchase a mask, get their mom and dad to go out, buy a couple masks, put them on the kids, and then on Halloween, when this countdown video stops, they are going to be brainwashed into something horrifically bad happening to them. Death. Why is the company doing this? I don't honestly know. There is a small monologue by one of the main bad guys, the villain. He says uh, something about 3,000 years pass, and then it's the, the, the day of the witch, and there's a bloodletting, and uh, the planets align. I mean, honestly, this shit is so insane. And it's all just like off the cuff, like, oh yeah, yeah, we're doing this because uh, we gotta kill kids, we gotta equal things out for the witch, Saul. I think the name is Saul. He says it one time. Never again. That's the only mention of a witch in the entire film called Season of the Witch. And then I guess Prophet? How does this company stay afloat? We also find out that these agents wandering around very robotic-like are in fact robots. These aren't just your ordinary German engineered run-of-the-mill robots from the freaking 80s. No, 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 no. These are fueled by a mineral from an artifact ripped straight from Stonehenge itself. Yeah, that's right. Inside of Silver Shamrock, there's a giant monolith in the center. So we have a bunch of worker bees gathering honey for their queen. And each one of these spices is packed in nicely into one of these face masks the kids are wearing. And that's the secret ingredient, Chemical X. At some point during this escapade, Nancy and Dennis get separated. The agents capture her. 
Dennis has to track her down, free her. He's surrounded by agents. He's surrounded by, I don't know, the, the this witch king, this warlock, whatever the main guy is. It's, it's very unclear. How are they possibly going to get out of this one? Well, as luck would have it, he finds a box of pogs, which I guess are the little chips they put in the mask. He goes up top into the rafters and just starts pouring them like confetti down on the people below, little snowflakes. They start getting electrocuted right away. It makes a giant blue ring. It's, it's quite a sight to see. They get away and everybody lives happily ever after. Or do they? Because as they're fleeing the scene, Dennis turns over to Nancy. He's like, wow, that was a close one. What the? She starts choking his ass. Another subversion of expectations takes hold as Nancy grips his throat, starting to choke him out. Because Nancy's not herself anymore. She's a fembot. He makes short work of her, starts to walk away, and then boom! She grabs him again! She's all armed this time. You could say our girl Nancy is armed and dangerous. <laughs> He takes out the arm, starts to leave again, and then boom! She starts going after him with the torso! This chick won't stop. She is thirsty. He hit it and quit it. He's got bigger Swedish fish to fry. We still have a television program going on that's gonna brainwash a bunch of kids. So he races over to a nearby something or another. He tries to get on the phone with the networks. This is what phones used to look like. And stop the thing from airing. Boom, one pulls the plug. Bam! Another one pulls the plug. ka -ch Wait. The third one doesn't. The music keeps playing. Silver Shamrock. He looks not only off in the distance and screams, but directly at us, the viewer. <laughs> Bam. Title comes up. Did he succeed? Did he fail? Only one thing's for certain. I wasted an hour and a half watching this movie. That people pretend is good. I do appreciate the fourth wall being broken out of nowhere. Also, some of the kills, pretty creative. Kind of gross when the camera doesn't pull away from them. I wanted to see the drill go into the skull. Didn't necessarily need to get the eyes gouged out, but I do really enjoy a good sound effect. And the sound effects in this are so laughably silly. You have like the thumbs gouging in and you hear a <laughs> It's like the kids are playing with Gak. Remember Gak? And Charlie Sheen, subscribe for nostalgia. It has those classic stock punch sound effects too. And my favorite part of the movie is when he actually blows through the gut of one of the agents and out comes honey. That must have hurt, huh, Tony? Who's clearly doing this video with me. That's what she said. Well, that's Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. It's not scary, it's very bizarre, and it's different. So I can see why people might appreciate it from that angle. I myself, I'll stick with the original and with some of the newer interpretations. I don't need this witchcraft on display, okay? I want to thank Tony from Hack the Movies for suggesting this and joining me in this video. And I think it's a special treat, a nice send off, tip of the hat. I'll play our favorite song together. He's already wearing the mask for it. What a good video. Oh no, what's happening? And Tony's dead. Subscribe. Halloween's a fun month. You know what else is fun? Becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Not only do you get to help celebrate me and my channel by becoming a member, you get access to 3,000 exclusive videos that no one in the real world gets to see, only, only special people. That's right, it's a perk. You can also find me all over the internet. I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash adamdoesmovies, where on occasion, I will record these live in front of a studio audience, just like you. Yeah, you could be there. You could be watching me do this in real time. I'm also on TikTok. I'm on Twitter. I'm around. I'd love to have you. I'd love to see you.